Business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs, get your pen and paper ready and tune in Sundays at 1 p.m. for Evolution Strategies, business sustainability and growth simplified. You must evolve to meet the challenges of today's marketplace. This is the only show in the Philly metro area that walks you step-by-step through success factors that make or break your brand. Want some free advice? Call in Sundays at 1 p.m. to talk to your host, Carolyn Lighty, and a panel of experts for Evolution Strategies, business sustainability and growth simplified. Good morning, good morning. No, I'm, you know, I do that all the time. It's actually afternoon. I'm so used to having a show in the morning. This is Carolyn Lighty. I'm your host for Evolution Strategies. And today's topic is going to be entrepreneurship and access to capital. My guest for this show is on his way into the studio. He had a little bit of trouble uh, finding the building, but he should be here momentarily. In the meantime, I was going to announce this at the end of the show, but um, a colleague uh, of mine is going to be launching his show next Sunday. That's November 3rd. His name is Linwood Jackson, and uh, a lot of you know him. He is uh, an advocate for the community. He's been around a long time. I think he's basically born and raised in this area. And we're very excited that he's going to be launching his talk show, which is going to be community-based. And, and what else? Good, good afternoon, uh, Linwood. How are you today? I'm great, Carolyn. Thanks for having me. Great. So you're getting ready to become, well, you've been a talk show host for a while. You've been co-hosting a lot of shows, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm on television, uh, Comcast 28 co-host and on on radio WILM 1450 as well okay and so what is are you excited about this show come on so show some excitement I know you got to be excited well I am excited <laughs> actually I'm trying to, I'm trying to contain myself in the studios oh. today but <laughs> okay. uh, uh, you know we have been working hard uh, uh, for over four or five years now um, um, with ch- co-hosting two talk shows and a radio show uh, with my friends, um, I guess I can, you know, Miss uh, From the Heart uh, on Comcast Channel 28 and Mr. Uh, Charles Brittingham mm-hmm. uh, also. So I want to thank those guys uh, for allowing me to co-host their shows. And now I am very excited to have my own show coming up November 3rd, the Linwood Jackson Radio Show. Great. So what kinds of things can we look forward to from the Linwood Jackson Show? Oh, uh, well, we can look forward to some great interviews. Uh, uh, we, we plan on putting out some a lot of content and information, uh, tips. Uh, we want to bring on our, our local celebrities and national celebrities, sports, mm-hmm. uh, uh, in sports and politics, and just have them come on and talk to the community about uh, you know how they got started and different things that they want to you know help mm-hmm. the young folks particularly mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know clean up these streets and, and give them a direction and inspire them to achieve uh, you know some big goals Carolyn the um, what I like is is your tagline tell everyone about this wonderful tagline because I think it sums up what your show is going to be about well um, well you're right thanks uh, we're talking ab- a little bit about the issues um, a little bit more about the solutions and then the fun stuff too because you know we've got to have balance in life that's good you know some of the interviews that I've heard that you've done um, I, I know you're very well entrenched in the boxing community and I was uh, privileged to hear some of the interviews that you did with some of the boxers up at the Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame uh, this previous year well you're absolutely right I go up uh, every year I'm a big boxing fan uh, on the national level uh, and a little bit on the local uh, as well. But uh, basically, I do go up to the International Boxing Hall of Fame up in Canasota, New York, uh, every year for their induction weekend. It's a big weekend. And while I'm there, I get to talk to a lot of the uh, uh, boxing uh, uh, superstars up there. Give us um, an idea of a couple of the ones that you actually interviewed. Well, I've interviewed, this year I've interviewed uh, Julian Jackson and his son, Julius Jackson. Uh, uh, we all know Julian Julius Jackson as a uh, light, mid, light heavyweight and middleweight uh, world champion, uh, a three-time uh, world champion, and he's inducted into the National Boxing Hall of Fame. Uh, his son is a boxer now. Um, you know, I interviewed Mickey Ward. I've interviewed uh, Colin Hart, who is uh, uh, a uh, photojournalist mm-hmm. uh, uh, in the boxing world from England. Uh, I've, I've actually interviewed a whole host of 
boxing mm-hmm. stars. Okay. And then from a civil rights perspective, you've also done a lot of interviews there and some celebrities, especially, I think, more recently down uh, in Washington um, with the, uh, the anniversary there that took place. With the yes, the 50th anniversary March on Washington um, uh, took place this year, commemorating, of course, the great uh, march that Martin King and uh, a lot of great civil rights leaders took at that time. Um, we did that again this year, and I was able, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the former secretary of the NAACP Delaware State uh, here in, in our state, uh, and I'm also the current vice president for the Wilmington branch. So I went up uh, to D.C. Uh, this year um, on behalf of, you know, we took a bus trip up, and I got to interview uh, Hillary Shelton, uh, who is the director of the political uh, 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 arm of the NAACP in Washington, and I got to interview Mark Mariel, who is the uh, president of the National Urban League, um, and a few other guys, Mr. Dick Gregory, mm-hmm. a great comedian. And so they're, they're on my website, uh, uh, Uh If you want to check those interviews out, uh, they're, they're archived. Okay, and you said the fun stuff. What kind of fun stuff will you be talking about? You talked about that balance, so let's hear about that. Uh, well, you're absolutely right, uh, Carolyn. Uh, you know, we don't want to talk about the issues a lot because we all know what the issues are, you know, and my show is about bringing the solutions. We want to find solutions to these issues in our community. So I'd like to focus more on uh, getting finding solutions to, like, the killings going on out there, the educational problem, the job issue. And uh, uh, so we talk a little bit more about the solutions to the issues, and then we like to bring in, you know, the fun stuff because life is a balance and we don't want to get all boggled down uh, with a whole bunch of riffraff. Uh, You know I'm a a dance, uh, I love dancing and performing, I'm an actor. Uh, As a matter of fact, I have two shows coming up, I might as well throw a plug out for them if it's all right with you. Go right ahead. Well, I have uh, Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, That's going to be a a nine-show uh, production to be taking place at the uh, Wilmington Drama League on Lee Boulevard here in our city of Wilmington, Delaware. And uh, that's going to, I think the first show is uh, December the 15th, somewhere around there. Um, uh, and it's going to last till after Christmas. Um, it's a great production. I think it's over uh, 20 or so uh, uh, performers uh, in this play. And then I have... Uh, um, Another production called Isaiah Turner I'll be performing in uh, with uh, Mr. Omar Rashida, uh, the local playwright. Well, most of us around here are familiar with him. And, uh, and that show, I think, is going to be November 16th. So you can find uh, those, you know, more information about that uh, on my pages, uh, my Facebook page, and my, particularly my website, uh, clinwithjackson.com, if you want to know more about that. But uh, so we'll be talking about the fun stuff because, you know, our young folks need to know that there's more to life out there besides the corners and, and, and all these killings. We want to teach them how to respect our, our each other, particularly our young ladies. And, uh, and I think the performing arts is a great way to express that mm-hmm. and, and through dance and theater and arts, which they took away, as you know, Carolyn, mm-hmm. uh, years ago. They used to be in the, the schools, schools, but yeah. now they're not in the schools. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds, you know, for someone who's retired from GM, um, you're pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're pretty uh, I busy. tell you, I don't look at it uh, like that. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're in the business. Your, your show is about business mm-hmm. and talking about business. Uh, uh, you give out some great tips and information uh, on your show every week. Um, and so, you know, uh, but it's, it's, you know, I kind of like, well, you know, in theory, I did retire, but really, I don't think I've worked harder uh, than I have since I so-called retired or whatever. You know, I don't look at it like retirement. I'm very, very, very busy. I've done more work now than I've ever done, actually, uh, to tell you the truth. And and life is, is a journey. You know, you just move from one 
place in one stage to the next. Uh, you keep moving. The minute you stop moving, then, you know, you, you'll probably perish. But so you want to keep moving. I just moved from one uh, job to the other. You know, I'm also, uh, uh, before I was working in the United Auto Workers, I was in the military mm -hmm. for about 12 years. So I actually retired from there as well. I like to think of it like that. And I just moved from, from station to station, uh, you know, so... I don't look at it like a retirement per se. Okay. Well, we're going to um, let you tell one more time. Your show is called the Linwood Jackson Radio Show. We are debuting that show at 1, I'm sorry, at 2 o'clock. That's right, Carolyn. I'll be Next. following your show, and I hope your <laughs> listeners will be uh, uh, stay, you know, stay on and listen to what we have. Uh, again, we're going to be offering a lot of prizes. Uh, we're going to give our uh, listeners an opportunity to call in and ask our guests questions, uh, anything they want to know in regards to uh, the topics that we're talking about. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, November third, my guest will be a recording, a local recording artist, uh, a gospel, a local gospel recording artist uh, and a director of, of, of some of the stage plays that, that are performing out here. So, you know, stay tuned and get your questions ready. Excellent. Well, we're going to take a break. Um, our uh, guest, our other guest that's going to talk to us about finding funding sources for businesses is here. So we'll be right back with Ami Kassar from Multifunding. Great. Welcome to Wilmington, Delaware. At Preservation Initiatives, we bring beautiful lofts to you. The recently renovated lofts at 400 Market Street are a must-see. A part of registered National Historic District. Featuring spacious floor plans, custom glass windows, solid surface countertops, stainless steel appliances, custom lighting, wood flooring, large closets, pocket doors, sunny interiors, high ceilings plus beautifully detailed trim molding. Enjoy the sights, sounds and tastes of Market Street. Just a short walk from the Wilmington Riverfront, featuring family-friendly places to enjoy, with plenty of restaurants, entertainment and other small town conveniences. Wilmington, Delaware in the middle of it all. Reserve today. Preservation initiatives. Urban revitalization through historic preservation. Preservation Initiatives is a wonderful, wonderful gem that we have here in the city of Wilmington. Don McGinley, its founder, has been developing historic properties since 1979. He's had properties in Boston, Miami, Philly, and now Wilmington. If you want to contact Preservation Initiatives in reference to any of the residential or commercial properties, please call them at 302-543-7565. That's 302-543-7565. You're listening to WFAI 1510 AM. Welcome back to this week's edition of Evolution Strategies, Business, Sustainability, and Growth Simplified. If you're just joining us, get your pen and paper ready for more free advice from Carolyn Lighty and her guests. Thank you very much for rejoining our show. Um, as we talked about, we're starting the show off talking a little bit more about the, uh, the funding sources for small businesses. Access to capital is a difficult thing. Small business owners are suffering from what sales, um, from weak sales and decreased customer demand. And on top of that, a lack of access to capital with tight banking regulation and requirements, it's difficult for small business owners to secure funding that will help them grow. Uh, they need to hire, and, and we look towards them for jump-starting the economy. A recent study found that 90% of small business owners nationwide agreed that the availability of capital for small businesses is a major problem. There are all alternatives uh, out there to bank, uh, to bank loans, you know, with the larger banks who are cutting down on the number of loans that they lend to small businesses, but we want to figure out which option is really best for your business. 
Ami is a nationally renowned small business advocate and leader. He's been featured in publications including the New York Times and the Huffington Post. He's guest authored a column for the Wall Street Journal, and he's appeared on Fox Business News. He's the recipient of the 2012 Small Business Advocate Award, and he's a regular blogger on small business issues. So um, that's why we wanted to wait for you, because you have an awful lot of information that we want to impart to our listening audience, and I think that you can bring some some tremendous value to the show. Um, I mean... <coughs> Good afternoon. Thank you. And once again, I, I'm actually a very punctual person. I don't know if you believe that or not. But I I'll give you another chance next time. I'm so sorry, everybody. No problem. It's good. Listen, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You have a, a slight accent. So where are you from? <coughs> where did you grow up? Um, would you like some water? I'd love some water. If I could. Okay. I'm, um, there you go. Um, a long time ago, I'm originally from South Africa. Oh, wow. But I moved to the United States when I was eight years old with my family, so I really considered myself to be American. Yes. And um, I have lived here, you know, mo all, the, the big majority of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I live in the suburbs of Philadelphia um, with my wife and my two kids and our newly adopted dog. Oh, that's <laughs> cute. And um, I um, also... Uh, you know, own and run um, multifunding.com, which is a service where we try to help small business owners and entrepreneurs figure out the best loan options for them in uh, what is unfortunately a very confusing market mm -hmm. uh, and environment for small business owners and entrepreneurs to get loans that make sense. Yeah. So how did you catch the entrepreneurship bug? What happened? Uh, was it out of necessity? You know, Plato said um, the necess necessity is the mother of all invention. Um, is that what kind of spurred your, your interest? No, I used to, um, I spent a decade working at a, a large company in the Philadelphia area called Advanta. Mm -hmm. uh, we were um, one of the largest issuers of credit to small businesses in the United States. And unfortunately, in the Great Recession, Advanta blew up. Mm. And um, so entrepreneurship, while I always think it, I had it in me and wished it mm -hmm. for myself, it, I had to face the choice after I was let go by the trustee, the bankruptcy trustees as to whether or not I was going to start my own business or get a job, and I chose to start my own business. I got fired on Friday and started multifunding on Saturday. You know, you're not by yourself. You know, I was looking at a study, um, and it, it was kind of interesting looking at the statistics. Um, the unemployed, if we have 11 million, it's a little over 11 million unemployed in our country, 26% mm -hmm. um, of those people have decided that they're not going to go back to work for another company. They're going to start their own businesses. Um, also, those who have started their own business, I found a number in the 90s where it was saying that... Um, they are still employed by other companies, but they have started businesses to supplement their income. So it just seems like there's an awful lot of people in America that have the entrepreneurship bug, but how does one decide what kinds of businesses to go into? Um, the advice I give people all the time is, uh, if you're not passionate about it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a business or an idea or a service or product that really uh, you're going to be completely buzzed about getting up in the morning after mm -hmm. just a few hours of sleep and or getting lost driving down the freeway <laughs> and <laughs> and um, and and pursuing uh, don't do it because it's it's starting a business and running and building a business it's very much like a child mm. uh, having a child and and for those of it's you out true. there who are parents if you uh, haven't um, you know, it's it's a full time and a half job and then some more. And just when you feel like you're completely exhausted and don't have an ounce of energy left, you have to start again. You have to do it again. It's funny. I remember when I started my first company um, back in the mid 80s. Um, I don't want to date myself, but in the mid 80s, um, I was pretty fortunate in that I started in the black and stayed in the black until I lost my biggest client, which was Microsoft. Ouch. <laughs> yes, ouch, big time. Um, and it, believe it or not, I didn't think I had all my eggs in one basket. Everyone says, do not put all your eggs in one basket. So Microsoft was pretty big, but I had about 50, 80 to 80 other clients. It's just that they were a pretty big client, you know, sure. so that was really, I guess, the same as putting my eggs in one basket. But um, folks would say, oh, well, you have such a great life. You're, you're in your own business. I worked full uh, 12 to 14 hours, seven days a week for seven years. 
That's right. So unless you're willing to put in that kind of commitment, you know, it looks glamorous and wonderful on the outside. And yes, I was able to take vacations and all of that to different places uh, several times a year. But when I wasn't on vacation, and even when I was on vacation, I was still working. I think someone said to me, that, or I read somewhere the other day, that entrepre- entrepreneurs get to ultimately get to li- live the lives that most people can't because they're willing to put up with what most people won't. Ah, that's really good. That's really, really good. So when it comes to funding, which is one of the biggest issues, I mean, is this a good time, number one, to start a business? And what kinds of funding sources are out there? I know that you deal in certain types of loans, and you have an 80% success ratio in terms of closing loans for people that are in businesses, which is very high. You know, you must go, like, more than the extra mile. You must go a few more miles to pass yeah, that. We, we do, but I think it's also important is to note that's 80% for the clients we take on. Ah, that's a good point. So... Um, the the loan market remains very tough Mm -hmm. out there, Mm -hmm. especially if you're starting up. And so it's uh, more important than ever, I think, to uh, get good advice and counsel and understand what is possible and at what cost. So uh, the reality, unfortunately, is that some people might not say unfortunately, but post-recession, um, there's a whole new world of lenders that have cropped up, which we call alternative lenders. Mm-hmm. And they're happy to lend to small businesses at exorbitant rates in many mm. cases. Yes. And so uh, while you might be able to get a loan, the question is, does it make sense for you and can you afford it and will you be mm-hmm. able to pay it back? Do they fall into the predatory lending category? A lot of them do, yeah. 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 Interestingly, I know that you're known, and we'll go back into that a little bit more, but I want to go back to the big businesses, the big banks, rather, um, and your your love affair, which is not, that's kind of the opposite, but your battle with the big banks and, and this new bank grading system that you came up with that folks are able to utilize to determine whether or not this is a bank that is friendly towards small businesses and whether or not you should even continue to uh, patronize them. Yeah, it's... Um our attitude is I don't actually mind so much if big banks um, were, were not um, lending to small businesses as much as if they were um, if they were uh, out not out there actually promoting and telling the world that they are. Ah, interesting. So the truth of the matter is that the smaller community banks mm-hmm. by design have to lend to smaller businesses. That's their business model. And that's really the best place. Uh, in our opinion, for a small business uh, to go out there and get a loan. And that's the the very premise of our website, um, www.bankinggrades.com, which is a free tool for small business owners to go out and uh, find the best loan options, uh, best lending lenders, banks in their neighborhoods that might have a shot of helping them. So how does a business to ta- decide between going and looking for an investor versus going and looking for a loan? I always advise the business to to look at both and to think about both options and then decide what's best for them. And that could be just when they're starting up or when they're getting to different stages. Okay. So you mentioned that you have a great track record when it comes to the businesses that you accept. So there must be specific criteria that you evaluate before, um, just for your specific business. And then we're gonna get a little bit into some of the trending. Yeah, so uh, for us to take on a client as a general rule, we we have to think that they can get a loan, Mm -hmm. which means typically that they have some cash flow, credit, and or collateral to put up. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have to believe that they can afford the loan that they're eligible for, Mm -hmm. and we have to like them. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so, um, you know, it's if you, there are loan options. They just have to make sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it, is this really a good time to start up a business right now with the economy being what it is? Is it a good time? You know, I started my business sort of in the, the, the bubble of the recession. Okay. And we've grown and built, and we built a business based on a need that was almost in many ways created by the recession. Mm-hmm. So some of the greatest companies in time have started. I think General Electric started after one of the biggest recessions. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, there's... I think the timing of when you start a business, it's a personal time. The economy doesn't necessarily dictate it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a decision by necessity. Mm-hmm. So if you've got something that you're passionate about and you believe in it and you know that you're good at it, I think the time is now. Uh, 
And as far as your, maybe not even just within your business or those that you lend to or find loans for, um, are you seeing a specific trend in terms of the types of startups that are being more successful today? I think you have to be careful because the majority of businesses that we actually lend to aren't startups. Mm -hmm. okay, they're existing businesses, and mm -hmm. we're helping them. I mean, we do some startup lending, but it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that we're seeing more and more service businesses start up. Right. We're seeing more and more people, which I think is a great trend, boost, mm -hmm. bootstrap companies and start them out of their family room or their living room or their garage. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's necessarily one type of business as much as, again, for me, the ingredient that drives success or not success is if the entrepreneur is, is particularly passionate and in love with what they're doing and feels a sense of purpose for it. What are some of the, the resources that are out there today that can help with someone, whether they're a startup or whether they are trying to figure out how to expand their business? What kind of information or resources are you aware of that is helpful um, to help businesses today? And how has the internet, I think the internet has made a lot of that, uh, and cloud-based solutions has made that a little bit easier for some businesses. Well, I think the internet has created, created great tools to help small businesses and entrepreneurs. We run our entire business in the cloud. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to information and support and resources um, and mentoring, it, I'm not convinced that the Internet replaces any of that. In fact, I think sometimes it makes it worse yeah. because uh, folks uh, often follow wrong advice and, and, and misinformation, and there's a lot of it out there mm -hmm. as people try trick entrepreneurs and sell them things that they, they don't need. Oh, that's a good point. So um, when it comes to mentorship uh, or support, you know, uh, you know, back to the analogy of parenting, moms often join mommy and me groups to have support. We always encourage small business owners and entrepreneurs, depending on what stage they are, to join a group. It could be through an SBDC, a SCORE, or a, a private group, and there are other, many of them out there at different stages that you are, so that you get the opportunity to spend time with other people who are in similar situations to yours, and you realize that you're not alone and get advice and support and encouragement. You mentioned cloud-based technologies and how that's how your business is run. Um, for our audience that may not understand that, can you get me a little bit more specific in what types of applications or what types of services or why even you decided to use cloud-based technology? Yeah, so we, all, all the tools to run our business, how we store our data, our email, our calendars, our CRM, our customer relationship management software, mm -hmm. our filing cabinets, um, Everything we do, our accounting is is run on web-based programs, which mm -hmm. is cloud-based programs. So, effectively, um, I can build and run a business. I can manage my business from any browser anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to worry about backup or servers or, or anything like that. And it's, it's all done for us. And we p pay monthly subscription fees, which, <laughs> if you're not careful, can add up sometimes. Right. Um, but... It is a trend that in many ways makes it easier um, to start and build a business today and something that we would strongly encourage you know, small business owners and entrepreneurs to think about and try to take advantage of. So um, what if someone, you mentioned your CRM. Your CRM is your customer relationship management. management. Correct. Right. And um, is that also used for marketing? How, how do you? It, it is. Or is it just contact uh, and follow up? In, a, in our partic particular case, we've tried several, but we've settled on a terrific program, if it might be right for your business, called Infusionsoft. Mm -hmm. And Infusionsoft is a blend of an email marketing platform like a constant contact plus mm -hmm. a CRM platform. So when a customer does reach out to us, we can see all their history, what emails we've sent, sent. them, what mm -hmm. they've opened, what they haven't opened, et cetera. I, you bring up a good point because I've con consulted with a lot of different companies where they have a wonderful database uh, of customers or people that have inquired about their products or services, but it's just kind of sitting there. It's like a gold mine that they've forgotten that they should be digging into <laughs> to find new business. Um, so they often don't make contact very quickly or they have, you know, engaging the customer is so important today and that customer experience. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, you know, if you meet someone walking down the street today and you get their business card, they might not need have a need or service 
a need for your service or product today, but they could in three months, six months, nine months, or 12 months, mm -hmm. or they could meet someone who does. Mm -hmm. So you want to stay engaged with them and stay connected with them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, you know, every, that, those are sometimes the better opportunities because the chances are meeting the next person down the street and them needing your service at that point are slim. Mm -hmm. So it's cri critical to do that and to keep everything uh, mm -hmm. going and flowing. So if I were to come to your website and inquire about your services, walk me through the contact process or the you know, contact strategy that you have for that inquiry. So our service might be, um, or our methodology might be, I think is different to mm -hmm. most web-based services. Uh, many websites and web-based services don't want you to talk to a person. They wa want you to do it all electronically and fill out forms and, and f figure out your solutions from there. Mm. Um, w it's our feeling that when a small business owner or entrepreneur is looking for a loan and that loan c could very well make or break their business, it's not, you know, deciding where you're going to go have dinner tonight. Yeah. It's deciding <laughs> something really major, so something yeah. fundamental yeah. that yeah. could make or break you. Um, mm -hmm. We, we want to talk to them. Okay. And so our whole point of our website is, is to encourage a phone call and that initial uh, free consultation. Okay. And uh, we, you know, that's what works for us. Other people in our business seem to think that uh, you can do what we do electronically. We don't believe that's the case. So would I fill out um, some basic information about m myself from, from a personal information, my company's information, or am I just putting in basic contact we information? Basic contact. Yeah. Basic contact, okay. Yeah. And then you're contacting, you're having a, consult <coughs> a consultant or representative contact me to ask more questions? Yeah, we set up a call. It's usually a 15-minute call with one of our loan advisors. I do many of the calls myself. Okay. And we like to listen to the small business owner or entrepreneur and then we like to hopefully be able to lay out for them a couple of choices. Mm -hmm. You could do, go this way and hear the pros and cons, or you can go that way and hear are the pros and cons. And, and many times, or often other times, we'll uh, try to give them something to think about. We'll say, um, go take a cold shower and call me back tomorrow. Because <laughs> maybe you don't just, you know, oftentimes a mistake we find many entrepreneurs making is that they think they need more money than they actually do. Okay. And um, how do you determine that? Mm. I want to dig deeper here because we have listeners out there that are all business owners that are wanting to understand what their next steps might be. And, and yes, it'll be great for them to go through your website and call you. But in the meantime, I'd like to be able to impart some sort of tip that would en enlighten them about that. Well, always challenge yourself as to n nine out of t 10 times from our experience, an entrepreneur can do it with less money than they think they can. And that could be instead of going to go get a fancy office to rent, they're going to do it out of their basement for a year. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to form some strategic partnership and trade some product. Or um, they're going to do less marketing mm -hmm. or, or more sales. Or you really, um, or maybe they're going to outsource a particular function for a little while instead of build equipment. Mm -hmm. Or they don't need to buy that building. They could rent that building for a little while, et cetera, et cetera. You always have to, push yourself hard to really say, what am I trying to prove here to get my business to the next level? Mm -hmm. And how much money do I really need to do that? Um, oftentimes, people are stretching too far and too fast in terms of their capital raise, and they'll spend six months or 12 months trying to borrow or get an equity, say a million dollars, mm -hmm. when they could get $50,000 a week in a week, and that $50,000 could help them prove something. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. once they prove that, then they can go think about their next round of money. So it's important, in our opinion, to think about funding and business in stages. Mm -hmm. If you have a three or four year old, you might be time to start worrying about where they're gonna go to kindergarten, but it's not time for most serious parents to start planning for where they're going to college. Right. And it's the same analogy is, in our opinion, applicable when you're thinking about uh, building a business. So if I'm if I'm already in business, let's just say that I've already been able to to establish myself to the extent that I'm, you know, I have inventory. I'm going to make it kind of a, a retail product related product company. Um, I have inventory, um, but but sales are slow, and now I have, <laughs> you know, uh, an onslaught of uh, 
of inquiry from through my website, but I'm still not moving any merchandise. What are, are there? But I, and I can't pay my bills because the merchandise. Is, I'm getting a lot of inquiry. I have merchandise, but it's not moving. What do, what do I do in that instance in terms of funding to keep myself afloat? Is it a funding issue? Is it low? Well, you know? I mean, you you might need some funding to fix that, but. Funding isn't your problem then. The problem is why you're not converting inquiries to sales, right? And right. If, if I went and got you $50,000 to fix that problem, it'll help you pay some bills so you can live another day. But unless you fix the fundamental problem, right. the $50,000 will burn out before you know it, and exactly. you'll, still, you'll still be in the same boat. And yeah, I bring that up because a lot of times, kind of like to your point, um, it's not necessarily about funding. It's a bit, you know, look at exactly what the issues are. Right. Um, in that is instance, conversion, maybe it's your marketing. It, it could be a whole slew of other things. Maybe it's the wrong season for what it is that you're selling. That's why it's not something, moving. Something's going on. Right. But... The money might be the band-aid, but not the long-term fix, solution. Right, exactly. And sometimes you need that. Sometimes you know you need a you, you need that. And unfortunately, in a situation like that, you're probably going to land up paying a lot of money for that money because okay. your financials aren't going to be so great. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're going to go get that chemotherapy, for lack mm. of a better analogy, for mm. your business, you better have an, a simultaneous plan to fix it. Because otherwise, you could be in serious trouble. Wow, chemotherapy. Why would you use something so? I'm just playing. No, <laughs> so no, 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 but we say that sometimes. <laughs> but you yeah, know, unfortunately, yeah. Um, post recession, yeah. there are a lot of extraordinarily expensive loan options out there 60, yes. 80, 100% APRs. Mm -hmm. That a small business owner, in the example of that person, will, will think, oh, geez, I got to get that money to pay my bills. Mm -hmm. And they get that money and, they, and then they sleep well but they haven't solved the problem right and so sometimes we call it chemotherapy sometimes we call it cocaine mm -hmm. okay and it's just a, a to, quick fix to push the push the thinking that mm -hmm. if you don't um solve for it the issue mm -hmm. and fix it then you're going to find yourself in the same boat in two months or three months and after two or three very expensive loans, you might as well shut down the business. Mm -hmm. And I hate to see people um, ruin their dreams because they bought some Kool-Aid right. and didn't realize what they were doing. You know, and that reminds me, there's an awful lot of factoring companies out there. Uh -huh. um, and, and maybe you can tell our audience a little bit about factoring and how that works in terms of loans based on that. So well, there's two kinds of loans. Factoring, in my mind, is the lesser of two evils. Um, f factoring is... Um, to get, get an advance on invoices when you're selling to other businesses. Mm -hmm. But if you have $100,000 you've invoiced out to your customers, you can go and um, um, get eighty to 85000 of that now and the balance when the customer pays. The mm -hmm. lender effectively buys your invoice and it can help mm -hmm. as a working capital solution, particularly for fast-growing businesses. Mm -hmm. We do a fair amount of factoring. Do you? Now, in that instance, though, in terms of how that's set up, you're, the person that you've invoiced has to agree to that. Is that not correct? They don't have to agree. They have to be notified. They have to be notified. Oh, so they don't have to, it's not like they have to say, yes, I don't mind you going through this process. No, they have to be notified. Okay. In 95% of the cases, occasionally they have to agree and sign on specific things, mm -hmm. but like in construction companies, mm. but the vast majority of the time they have to be notified, notified, but they don't have to agree. Is that a negative for me as a business owner if I, ha if I undertake that particular way of funding you know, future growth? We, we often have that concern that the business owner th feels that they're going to look weak if yeah. they factor. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that 99% of the time that... Um, Notification goes to a payables clerk somewhere in an accounting department, and the primary contact never knows. And you'll be surprised how many companies are in fact turning to factoring mm -hmm. in in today's environment. The other type of financing that's become much more common post recession is um, factoring of merchant ac merchant account receivables. So um, a lender will buy, say, a business is a retail business. And they are predominantly using um, credit mm -hmm. credit cards. The lender will buy, um, you know, a f their future credit card receivables, and that is, a, in my opinion, a far scarier business mm -hmm. than factoring. 
and can be very, very difficult for a business once they've done one of them. These are short-term loans mm -hmm. to get off of them. And are they high interest as well? They can be up to 200% mm -hmm. APR. Wow, my gosh. Um, so that's a, a, a loan device where a history of merchant account Transactions Correct. is what determines the amount of money. Correct, and okay. how how the business is managing their cash, and you know there are good guys and bad guys in that business. So it's for good lenders and bad lenders. Um, so it's really careful to make sure you're dealing with the most reputable, trustworthy lender as possible at the best possible rate. Wow! So those that's 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 some good information. Um, are what are those? Uh, what other types of lo loans do you do you provide to your company? So I can. We'll do SBA loans. Okay. We'll take traditional lines of credit, term loans, equipment leases. Uh, there are different types of SBA loans. Um, Go back to equipment leases. How does that work? What is that? Uh, I mean, in terms of if I wanted to out buy new computers for my, my operation. Yeah, if you needed new computers, as an example, you could lease them. So the leasing company will own them, and you will pay the leasing company monthly payments mm -hmm. for, for that equipment. Okay. So... So is that you financing? Are you financing it or correct? Okay, so it's financing of of the equipment, and that's also based again on your your company's solvency. Yeah, that's based so on your company's solvency, your personal credit, and many times, your business credit impacts that also. Okay, now when it comes to credit, because everybody's struggling, I mean, what what percentage of the customers that are looking for these types of funding solutions have bad credit? and therefore are still looking for a solution after. Well, the sad reality is that a lot of entrepreneurs um, are left with and have bad credit mm -hmm. t today. And unfortunately, that rules many of them out of the more reasonably priced financing mm -hmm. options. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes it's just a, a, a cost of doing business and they made choices and, and for survival involved killing their credit. Mm -hmm. And so we have to work with them and figure out the solutions. Uh, different lenders care more about credit factors, as an example, aren't particularly concerned about credit. Mm -hmm. because they're more interested in underwriting the credit of the, um, the, the small businesses' customers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it really it, it kind of ebbs and flows you know, depending upon the situation. What other tips uh, outside of... Um applying for a loan or going for an investor type uh, funding resource. Um, there were other things I think that a business owner could do, um, even internally, if you have existing creditors, you know, do you have tips as to how you might negotiate or talk to your existing creditors that may help free up any of your, your cash? You're shaking your head. No, it's, <laughs> it's a fair point. You know, unfortunately, the real, the reality is that that's another way to finance a business, mm -hmm. and you have to think about it and manage it. And uh, my best advice is if you're hitting a lull, talk to your suppliers about it. Try to mm -hmm. work with them in a cooperative fashion. Mm -hmm. Keep an open book and a transparent situation. Yes. Particularly in those first few years, things can be difficult and hard. Mm -hmm. That's good. So if you had to pick just one major thing that you could impart to our audience as it relates to um, finding the right funding source for their business, what would you uh, what would you say? Don't wait till the last minute. Mm -hmm. um, give yourself the time you need to work through it properly and thoughtfully. Try to, um, as with any other important decision in life, come up with a couple of options and alternatives. So sometimes if you've got this and that to look at, you can really think through carefully which one makes the most sense. And um, how important is a business plan in expanding or dealing with this particular issue? What information, I guess, I'm trying to figure out. What do I need to come to you with? This is during this consulting. Uh, yeah, business plans are more important from our experience, uh, as a general rule, not all the time with uh, investors more than lenders. Mm -hmm. um, so um, be very. Care careful and wary of some of these sites out there on the internet that will uh, try to sell you a uh, business plan for a couple thousand dollars when it's in a case where it's absolutely not necessary. Mm. Business plans are important, I think, for your own internal thinking, although things will change constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, business plans or forecasts might be 
important in some lending situations and definitely will be in, in with investors, but the majority of time, lenders don't care about business plans. Okay. So is the forecasting or a growth plan, you know, I say business plan, but I guess I'm speaking more, especially in terms of the kind of businesses you're dealing with. Are you looking at their, you're looking at their financials. You're looking to see what, you know, historically what's gone on, but what, how important is it to know what the plans are going forward? Well, the answer is if this, if you're going to get this hundred thousand dollars and it's going to cost you $20,000 to borrow it, Mm -hmm. tell me, Mr. Entrepreneur, how are you going to make more than that twenty thousand dollars? That's going to cost you with the hundred thousand extra hundred thousand dollars over the next year or over whatever, whatever the, term the is. period is. Yeah. Do you have a plan that you believe that you're convinced of mm-hmm. that you're going to make more than that twenty with that hundred, as mm-hmm. an example? Mm-hmm. And if you don't, don't do it. And if you do, it might not the rate and the fact that that's a twenty percent loan might not matter. So what, what's your plan? And tell, tell me in plain English and with your numbers and cents how that's going to work, not with numbers and cents from some um, accountant or advisor or business plan writer who mm. doesn't really know your business. Ah, so whereas a lot of business owners might think it's more impressive to come to you with their CPA's numbers, you're saying you want them to be in a position to be able to speak to those numbers. I want them to understand it. Yeah. So I want them, you know, unfortunately, many business owners today don't know the difference between their balance sheet and their income statement. Mm. Okay. And don't really know the numbers or are months behind on their accounting. You know, I put a guy in a, an entrepreneur in a 22% interest loan a few months ago, and he could have well afforded, well been eligible for a 6% loan, but he was six months behind on his accounting. Mm. Now, I don't know any lender in their rational mind who would lend money to a small business when they're six months behind. Mm, interesting. Very good. Uh, and you bring up some success stories. Can you tell me about another success, like an, an actual success story um, in terms of recently, a recent funding uh, client? We just uh, recently funded a bowling alley in the St. Louis area uh, through an SBA loan. And in that case, we managed to um, reduce their um, monthly payments by 50% uh, as, a, as, a, as a restructuring um, of their debt. Which is um, another s- another side of the services that you provide. Yeah, another yeah. side, which is really exciting mm-hmm. f- for for them. So let's dig into that a little bit. Restructuring of debt. How does that work? Is it kind of like, you know, you're you're not claiming, uh, you know, you're not filing bankruptcy or anything. No, but it's, it's, it's a positive thing. We always say that on on an annual basis. Just like going to the dentist, you should check in on your debt. And you should look at the loans that you've accumulated over the years and make sure that they still make the most sense for you and your business. Mm -hmm. Because loan markets change and businesses change. Mm -hmm. So whereas two years ago, you might have taken a 12% loan because that's all you were eligible for. Today, you might be eligible for a 6% loan. And it makes sense to restructure that. Or two years ago, you didn't have any receivables, and now you do. So there might be other loan options out there for you. Mm -hmm. So... uh, Sometimes that debt expense can be one of the biggest things, uh, you know, that knocks away at income and positive income. Mm -hmm. And um, we feel like it's very important. That's interesting. So you're taking a look at the entire health of the business from a financial perspective and then coming up with uh, the loan or modification type options that are going to put them in a better position? I I think modification is the wrong word. Okay. Because modification is almost like a... Uh, for someone who can't afford it anymore, or it's a modification of a mortgage, okay. or something, uh, we're saying restructuring, reorganizing. Restructuring rather than modification. Yeah, I okay. think that's the better that's word. That's good. I stand corrected. No, no, no. <laughs> I think that it doesn't have to have a negative, you know. Well, and people do think of it that way when you say modification. Right. See, I think any change is some sort of modification, but I understand your point, you know, right. um, as it comes, as it determines um, based on the the, lo- the lending process. Um do you have another success story? Um, something more lo- like more retail, like or, or restaurants. Are you? I mean, how how are you? That's usually a high yeah, risk we, area. We, we recently managed to get a an existing restaurant um, up in the Philly area a hundred fifty thousand dollar SBA Express loan, which is uh, they have ten years to pay back at six percent interest. Mm. So they have a long time to pay it back. What and was their circumstance? Why did they come to you? Um, they wanted to get some working capital for the business and pay off some high interest debt that they had and 
uh, at a patio, I believe. Mm-hmm. And Okay, so there was some expansion involved. Some expansion. Because I wonder, you know, now the reason I'm asking for those types of success stories, I'm trying to figure out, is this a point now with the government shutdown and the economy being what it is? Are people kind of just trying to stay, you know, to stay alive right now, keep their head above the water? Are they in, in expansion mode or are those that are out there trying to figure out ways to grow the business even under under these circumstances? Yeah, I don't think that the government shut down um, I think 99% of entrepreneurs are over it and didn't think twice about it because mm. they didn't have time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, luckily, it only lasted for, what, 10 days? Luckily, it only lasted for 10 days. Who mm. knows what's coming up? But Yes, in January, February. Um, but we see many small businesses and entrepreneurs out there thinking about expansion, thinking about growing, and, and building their businesses. So speaking of the shutdown and the imp- since this is a temporary fix, did you experience any increase in inquiry during that time? No. Were nothing Nothing changed? We, we, you know, there was a lot of hysteria um, in the press about the terrible impact on small business lending yeah. associated with the shutdown. Mm-hmm. But the reality is that the only loans that were affected were about half of SBA loans, and SBA loans make up about 1.4 or 5% of all small business loans in the country. Mm. So when it boiled down to it, there were a couple hundred businesses uh, wow. in the okay. loan process. And I don't want to minimize the pain for them. It was sure. frustrating and aggravating for them. But there mm-hmm. are much bigger problems out there mm-hmm. today when it comes to access to capital. And um, I don't think the government shut down for those two weeks um, had a particularly negative impact on it. Well, and I know that there were, were businesses, because there were a few colleagues of mine that had mentioned that they had already been approved for government contracts, and certainly that kind of was on hold during that time frame. Is that a situation where a business might say, okay, well, had it gone longer, but um, would that have been a situation where a company might come to you and say, listen, I've, got, I've won this contract <laughs> with the government. In the meantime, I have, you know, 200 employees that... Uh, that I need to take yeah, care we, of. We didn't get any calls like that. I'm mm-hmm. sure there were companies. Again, what I was in my previous comments, I was discussing more of the, the specific related to the loans. Yeah. I know that the yeah. shutdown affected businesses in other ways, and it slowed down payments for some you know, mm-hmm. companies also. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. All right. Well, we are um, just about to come up on the end of the show, and I do appreciate you coming in. And uh, hopefully we can dig even more deeply into some of these uh, different types of loans and kind of maybe even walking people a little bit more step by step and to as far as how to apply what information they should be prepared with when they come to a company like yours. Um, Why don't you give folks some information on how to reach you? Oh, thanks. Uh, You can reach us at www.multifunding.com. All of our information is there and on the web and uh, we would be happy. Our phone number is one, also 1-800-276-0690. And if you're interested, we'd be you know, happy to help chat through anything you might need. You know what? I just remembered I had another note here I wanted to talk, and we do have a few more minutes, about uh, you're going to be speaking at Select USA, the 2003 Summit. Is that in a, I saw that on, uh, I think I saw that on your website or in your Twitter account. That's yeah, where I saw, yeah. That's where I saw that. You, you're very prolific on Twitter and, and out there with all the columns and blogging that you do. I have a busy week ahead of me. I'm, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I got here a little bit late. Again, my apologies. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. I'm uh, flying to uh, San Francisco on Tuesday to speak, speak at an Inc. Magazine event out there on Wednesday. Okay. And then. Uh, taking the red eye to DC. Um, there's an Invest in America summit put on, I believe, by the Department of Commerce. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it'll be a group of people l- trying to promote um, the notion of uh, outside entrepreneurs and investors. International investment in the investing USA. Investing in America. Yeah. And we'll be having a panel there to talk about um, our, our capital, access to capital network throughout the states. And I'm looking forward to moderating that. I think that's on Friday. Okay. And then I'll come home and sleep. (laughs) You think until there's something where your wife is going to ask you to do something. I'm sure she will. (laughs) Well, that sounded, the reason I brought that up is because it was very interesting. I did some work with the U.S. Department of Commerce for about six years. And um, when I saw that you were going to be speaking there, and and there's always this interesting thing about investing in America. You know, um, people have different points of view about that. 
you know, in terms of whether it's a good thing to have companies that are, out, or, you know, people outside of the country investing. Uh, is there a correlation to, to those investments to what are, you know, improvements in our economy? Can you, can you, can you draw any correlation I'm to not, that? I'm, You're not qualified I'm to I'm not that? sure I can, yeah. I can answer that, but I, I, I do know that, at least for the mission of us in multifunding, that uh, putting small businesses and entrepreneurs in, in the appropriate loans and, and that will help them grow and sustain themselves. Uh, that's that's our mission, and we, you know, I don't know exactly how many jobs we've helped create. Okay, it, it hasn't moved the needle for the country, but it's it's our little part to to help. And unfortunately, um, there are, are we, we need more of that. Um, we need more. It's the small businesses that are the pillar of. Um, our economic sustainability mm -hmm. and recovery and we need to do as a country everything we can to help invest in them sustain them and make them grow and flourish well you're you're a man after my own heart i my the whole purpose of launching the, the radio program and some of the live events that we do on a quarterly basis is basically about helping businesses here locally we're trying to help the small business owner in the state of delaware and just about every guest that i have come on talks about a resource or some topic that's going to be of assistance to them in doing that i know that my colleague who's launching his show next sunday he has an awful lot to talk about as it relates to helping resolve some of the issues of our community so it real, it's all about service you know giving back and helping people where we can so i absolutely appreciate you coming in today and Thank look forward so to much. perhaps working together uh, in the future uh congratulations to my colleague mr linwood jackson on uh, the launch of his show coming up on sunday and um until next week i'm carolyn lighty for evolution